3D printing has never been so accessible as in recent years. It has gone far beyond hobbyist scope and become a common tool for manufacturer and businesses. Prototyping, tooling, dentistry, jewelry, science, education, design, 3D printers handle it all both in desktop and industrial scale. As for the major technologies ruling the market at the consumer level, one of them is clearly FDM, also called FFF. Since its emergence, this method has been quite popular among 3D printing beginners due to its increased simplicity and affordable costs, while seasoned users enjoyed the extensive level of creative freedom and modification. Furthermore, some FDM machines are now capable of printing with such materials that allow them to be utilized by industries as well. This is Top 3D Shop, and in this video we're going to tell you everything you should know about one of the most popular 3D printing technologies at the moment. What FDM stands for, how it works, what its pros and cons are, and more. FDM, or Fused Deposition Modeling, is an additive manufacturing technology that applies thermoplastic or composite materials to create 3D objects in a layer-by-layer -layer fashion. Specifically, an FDM 3D printer feeds melted filament through the extruder nozzle and selectively deposits it on the build platform, creating a component of the defined shape and properties. Dual extruder printers are capable of printing two different material types, for example, insoluble and soluble, or in two different colors. However, most hobbyist-grade FDM 3D printers come with the single extruder used for both the model itself and supports. The printer's type and brand determine the component's movement along the axes. In the schematic, the extruder can move in the X and Y direction while the build platform moves up and down. There are different variations depending on the machine's version. Let's analyze the process of printing on an FDM printer step by step. As with any AM technique, first you should prepare a 3D object model in the dedicated software. Start with importing the design file and setting all the necessary building parameters such as orientation, layer height, infill percentage, etc. The program will do the rest by analyzing the chosen model and slicing it into layers. Then it will define extruder paths and printing instructions in line with the acquired data. To proceed, filament must be loaded into the printer. For a dual extruder machine and models with supports, two material spools should be used. The print process can be started with preheating the platform, which will maintain the required temperature to control the cooling of the extruded material. Once the extruder reaches the appointed temperature, filament melts, comes from the nozzle, and is distributed over the platform in a pre-configured pattern eventually forming the 3D model. Due to the three-axis system, the extruder and build platform can move in three directions while building the object. The filament is deposited in certain areas layer by layer, which will rapidly cool and solidify. Depending on the object structure, some areas might require multiple passes to cover the prearranged patterns. Once a layer is completed, the print head moves along the z-axis by a layer height. Afterward, the printing cycle repeats again till all the layers are built. When the model is fully printed, all that remains is to remove it from the platform and clean it from the support structures, if there are any. After this, FDM printed parts may require some additional post-processing operations to improve their finish and general look. We will dwell upon that a bit later. Now let's look at the capabilities and limitations of fused deposition modeling technology, as well as some common issues that users come upon when using this printing method. The majority of FDM 3D printers let you adjust the build speed, nozzle, and build platform temperature, layer height, and cooling intensity. All of these are usually changed in accordance with the material used. You may consider FDM quite slow, but mind that overspeeding can lead to unpleasant consequences for your model. Apart from the low overall quality and spoiled finish, you risk breaking the object's structure by ruining some areas in the process of building. A decent result is totally worth the wait. One of the first things you should consider when searching for a 3D printer is its build volume. Regular desktop devices usually come with about a 200 by 200 by 200 millimeter chamber. As for industrial machines, they can offer a build volume of up to 1000 by 1000 by 1000 millimeters. The basic criterion for this choice is your purpose and potential designs. How big and how many parts do you plan to be making? Mind that larger objects can always be split into parts, printed in several sessions, and glued afterwards. The standard nozzle diameter is 0.4 millimeters. In most cases, it is a decent option, while lower options might cause some printing difficulties. Still, if you desire to get smoother surfaces and finer features, use a nozzle with a smaller diameter. Note that this change will also affect the build speed. FDM usually offers a 0.02 to 0.4 mm layer height. The smaller it is, the smoother your model surface will be, including complex forms and finer detail. However, if you aim for high production speed and lower costs, you can increase this parameter. 
The latter is recommended for rapid prototyping with low fidelity requirements. Layer adhesion is crucial for FDM-produced parts as their quality depends on the adhesion between the deposited levels. It relates to the binding strength of multiple material layers caused by high temperature and pressure applied to the melted filament. It's important to remember that this strength will always be inferior to the material's own strength. This contributes to the anisotropic nature of the FDM printed parts. Moreover, a slight deformation while pressing filament to the previous layers results in a wavy surface and visible lines that can still be seen even by the smallest layer height setting. This is why such printouts usually require post-processing. Some models have overhang areas that require support structures to be printed correctly owing to the peculiarities of FDM technology. Clearly, it is impossible to deposit filament layers over the air, thus some reliable base is needed. Supports can be made from the same filament as the model itself. However, in some cases, mostly for high-grade and industrial applications, more expensive dissolvable materials like PVA can be used to make the removal process easier. Note that this usually requires a dual extruder 3D printer. Insoluble supports will naturally affect the model surface quality, so it is advised to minimize their use to a reasonable limit or devote sufficient time to post-processing. All FDM models have a certain peculiarity. They are often printed hollow to save on material and time. The external solid layer is known as the shell, while the internal structure with low density is called the infill. Both these parameters have a direct impact on the model's strength. For a desktop FDM 3D printer, the infill is customarily set to 25%. As for the shell thickness, 1 mm is enough to rapidly produce parts with decent characteristics. Warping, one of the most well-known problems of FDM printing, requires special attention. Since the extruded filament tends to shrink while cooling down during solidification, different areas acquire varying dimensions and properties. Thus, it affects internal tensions and causes distortion of the bottom layer. Despite regularity of this process, it can be prevented by improved adhesion, close observation, and careful temperature control for the bed and build chamber. Another common issue in FDM printing is the so-called stringing or oozing. When the nozzle is idly moving from one printing area to another within one layer, the melted filament may slightly leak and form a string between the start and end points of the route. To minimize stringing, you should first make sure that the filament is dry and that the temperature and feeding rate are correct. Only after that is it reasonable to proceed to the retraction settings adjustment. Overall, there are quite a few reasons for stringing to occur and it might be hard to determine a specific cause from external signs. That is why it is better to consistently check and rule out all the possible reasons. Now let's look at different techniques for post-processing parts printed using FDM. Due to the method specifics, FDM-produced parts are frequently printed with supports to preserve their structure. Insoluble support structures are made from standard materials such as PLA, ABS, PC, nylon, etc. They are primarily removed by hand, pliers, or other similar tools. Nevertheless, there are soluble materials that perfectly fit the role of support structures, such as hips and PVA. They greatly facilitate the removal task as they tend to dissolve in limonene and water respectively. But if the details still require post-processing, then the first and easiest way is sanding. The process is rather long, labor-intensive, and should be performed in several stages. Start with a low-grit sandpaper and proceed with finer grits appropriate for your needs. Mind that excessive or improper sanding can damage the surface of the processed part. Additionally, one should avoid breathing in small material particles, so it is better to use a mask in the process. For higher surface quality, one may perform polishing after sanding. It is usually done by using a buffing wheel or special tools. The next post-processing method is vapor smoothing. This method applies acetone vapors when dealing with ABS. As acetone is flammable and its vapors are poisonous, the procedure must be carried out in a closed environment and under careful supervision. Due to the chemical interaction between acetone and outer ABS layers, the model surface melts and becomes smooth and glossy. The process is uncontrollable and uneven, therefore it will not fit applications requiring high-dimensional accuracy. Still, it is great for aesthetic purposes. To give a model or part a truly unique and professional look, creators often resort to priming and painting techniques. To color an FDM printed object, one should first sand it and consistently coat with primer, which provides a base for further painting. Usually, the latter is performed with a brush or spray depending on a desired result or available time, since the first option is better for complex designs while the second is much faster. The next post-processing method is hydrography. It is also known as water transfer printing, being one of the most curious post-processing techniques for FDM printed objects. 
It implies dipping a model into water and covering it with ornamental images. This way, you can get a printout with a unique design. The method is suitable for plastic, metal, glass, wood, and other materials. Also, when you need to print an object that exceeds the printer's build volume, it is only natural to split the model into several parts, which can be further easily glued or welded together by means of bonding agents. Fused deposition modeling is currently recognized as one of the best 3D printing technologies for various goals. In spite of certain weak points, such as an occasional lack of speed and almost mandatory post-processing, FDM has much to offer in terms of smooth and user-friendly 3D printing experience. Being accessible, straightforward, versatile, highly customizable, and increasingly cost-efficient, FDM 3D printing provides sufficient accuracy, quality, and performance to meet manifold additive manufacturing needs on both beginner and professional level. This is Top 3D Shop with the guide on fused deposition modeling technology. Subscribe to our channel, leave comments, and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. See you soon!